Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Boots and Backstraps podcast. Brought to you by Homes by Shane and produced by Danny Geo Productions. Come on now. On his own, looking for backstraps, way deep in the woods. Tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon. But when the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and backstraps. Hey everybody, this is a show where we talk all things hunting and country music. From the classics through today. From big bucks to bull elk. We've got it all. Folks, welcome back to another episode of Boots and Backstraps. I am joined as always by my wonderfully talented and experienced co-host, <laughs> Tom Cat. How are you, sir? I like how you keep changing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm pretty excited where's my, about our... Hey, uh, where's my come on now? Come on now. <laughs> Pretty excited about our guest tonight, and yeah, uh, you know, it seems like we haven't been here in a couple of weeks, but we actually have. It's just uh, been so much fun. Uh, last time around, we had Oscar Carlson on, and mm-hmm. we had Thurman Tucker from Quail Forever, mm-hmm. Oscar being one of my best friends, and world-renowned sheep hunter. He is indeed. All, all around great guy and lousy golfer. <laughs> he's gonna great, he's great gonna see you say that. Oh, he's yeah. a great storyteller but. he is a great he's a wonderful storyteller where we barely scratch the surface i feel like on the stories that he has so i'm excited oh, to get him back we did just scratch the surface we absolutely have to have him back yeah uh, he talks about stories uh where he's in the middle east up in the mountains and the whole himalayans and and just to get all the to stands the, <laughs> yeah just to get to these places he's got to go through the gauntlet of you know machine guns and uh, bribes and kind of uh, happy that I've never had to go through those experiences. I'm used to just like giving my three year old a cracker before bed to get him to brush his teeth. That's the bribery <laughs> I'm used to. Not guys with machine guns and bottles of vodka. Yeah, that's a whole different animal. Pretty wonderful. That was a wonderful, uh, wonderful show. It was. And you know we've had some great shows. We got you know we have a. We don't have a camera on it, but we have a board over my left shoulder, and we've got dozens of uh, guests that are coming up. That mm-hmm. we keep we keep referring to them as uh, fun and exciting and uh, colorful, very colorful. <laughs> and uh, well, tonight's not going to be any different. We have a very colorful guest tonight. No exception and to that I'm rule. <laughs> certainly looking forward to uh, some of the guests we have in the future, hunting guests and country music guests, and I'm pretty excited tonight. Country music. We're back to the music. We've had a run now of uh, hunting specific guests. Yep. And we agreed to get back into music and do some music guests. And I can't think of a better person to bring us back in to someone that's been in the local music scene for what seems like forever. <laughs> she looks like she's 15, but she has <laughs> actually probably been in the music scene for longer than that. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, help us welcome to the Boots and Backs podcast, Erica Hansen. Thank you. Yay. Having me, yeah. wow! This is really neat. <laughs> We're excited to have you. Thanks for uh, getting in to talk with us. Cheers! Yeah, let's do that. Let's just exactly. Start it off with That's cheers. important. Cheers! Yeah. Well, you got a little mix in yours this week, huh? Uh, what? Oh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> hmm. I had a mishap this last Saturday at a wedding. What happened? Well, <laughs> you're still in the business, and I'm like not really in the business. This is as in the music business as I am. Yeah, Shane, tell us about that wedding. Yeah, about that (laughs) wedding. So friends of ours got married, and uh, we're having fun, and there's a bunch of, like, Rowdy Cowboy Show people there, obviously. And so these are people that I haven't seen in forever, and they have a bar there, and this bar takes plastic, and I had plastic, and (laughs) yeah. So it just I was thinking about, you know, 10 years ago when I could do 10 shots in a night and walk (laughs) out of the bar stone cold sober, and I got to... I don't know, somewhere in the seven or eight area and then Mm-mm. needed a ride home. So <laughs> it doesn't take much, does it, when you get around those old hogs breath and rowdy cowboy people. I had to Can I say that they could probably write a country song about Shane's night on Saturday? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm not, it, it was fun. It was fun. It was definitely Who got married? Fun. Tim and Stephanie Hathaway. Okay. 
So he is a more new generation Rowdy Cowboy show. He was in the military, okay. served in the Army for 24 years, I think it was. Um, and, uh, and then retired as a sergeant, staff sergeant, I think specifically. Anyway, he, uh, he and Stephanie met actually at Rowdy Cowboy show, which I'm sure you've heard that story numerous times over the years. It's amazing how many people met at the Rowdy Cowboy show, <laughs> got married two to three or four years later. I'd see him, one of them back and I said, ah, it didn't work out, did it? No, I'm back. <laughs> back from home. I'm punishment. back. Like it's the, <clears throat> the dating pool to go to the show. Right. Oh yeah. Right. It was definitely it. Did you bring any fishing equipment with you? (laughs) So Erica was just telling me before we started filming that she and Mark, her husband, used to go and see you at the show. Oh, I remember Erica. Oh, we used to have so much fun on Monday nights when you were. um, It was hard not to. Oh, it was just so much fun. We looked forward to it every week. And on a Monday night, you know, people got crazy. Oh, man. (laughs) Did you do the dances? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Pour me another one. I'm finished with the old one. I'm drinking my baby. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes. I <laughs> See this? I told you, you're the legend. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a whole, and then it was the same um, songs. Like, you knew exactly what was going to, there was just, a, you know, sections in the night where you'd do, you know, a few of the same yeah, songs. Yeah, the Hank in a row. Jr. And yeah, Charlie yeah. Daniels. It was so much it fun. It was a whole series of, like, five songs. Yep. Yeah. It was like it a always set. always went together. And yep. And the actions, everybody did the actions, and it was oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> when we had Matt Matoon on from WeFest, that was a topic where he talked about the folks from the Hogs Breath would go to WeFest, and then they would do these choreographed dances that they'd been doing forever at the Hogs Breath. Sure. And people at WeFest were like, "What's this?" <laughs> oh, the people at the WeFest were familiar with, it, especially John Anderson. We had John Anderson at the WeFest ten times, nice. And every time he couldn't wait to come because we get the whole crowd doing that old swinging routine, you know, just a swinging. Yep, yep. And we, he finally said, bring him up on stage so we could barely see the band because the, the whole stage was lined up with, you know, probably. Were you 80, one of those, Erica? Were you involved in that? people You know, doing the not, swinging. At, not at Wee Fest, but I, I do remember the, the swinging song at the Hog's Breath. Yeah, that uh, was all part of it. It was so much fun. <laughs> we went up on stage with Charlie Daniels. He said to me, I said, Charlie, I got a buddy here, Rick Moras, and I said, we oh, uh, boy. we do a little thing uh, that I've been doing for thirty some years, and it's you know to your big hit, uh, drinking my baby goodbye. <laughs> I said, do you mind if we go up and do our little? He says, well, I don't like sharing the stage with folks. I said, oh no, we wouldn't come out on stage with you. We'd go off over by the speakers on the wing. He says, yeah, that'd be all right. So me and Rick did that whole routine live with Charlie Daniels. Drinking my baby goodbye. That was pretty funny. <laughs> nice. Nice. I know that Rick Moras will die happy now. He will. <laughs> so, Erica, as much as we love talking about Charlie Daniels' band and some of these other acts. I'm enjoying I'm it. Sure I'm sure you're just, a fan of. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we want to talk about you. <laughs> okay. We're here to, to fill the fans in because you've got, you've got your hands in quite a few projects locally. And I want to try to, like, touch on them tonight. Sure. But I think we should start with maybe like how you got interested in music and who your influences were, maybe that kind of thing. Sure. Um, well, I grew up, um, my mom was a big influence in my life because she was our uh, church accompanist for many years, and she was also in a trio. So I would go watch her perform and listen to her um, play piano and organ every day. And, um, When I was in kindergarten, I decided I wanted to start piano lessons. So I did that up until about the sixth grade. Um, And then, you know, I was, I did the whole band thing. I didn't do choir and or anything like that. But then um, when I was in my twenties and I kind of got the, the karaoke bug, (laughs) I started doing a lot of singing that way. And like, this is really fun, you know? And also our family had this portable, um, (laughs) studio where you could go in and record a song and then there was like a a blue screen where you could make a music video and we took that um, to malls and the state fair fun um it was so much fun Um, I bet that was a riot and you you would go in it was like a a giant jukebox you'd step into it and then there was a a window so people could see you singing um like a photo booth but a karaoke booth right right and then you go I've done that that first yeah and then go make your video um, so we had that business going and of course 
I did all the demos for that. <laughs> so, like, um, so that was a blast. But you were in high school at the time? That was, um, yeah, let's see. That was probably, yeah, I was probably 18, 19. Okay. Yeah, so that's, I started doing a little bit of singing there, and then, and then that's kind of when karaoke started and it was, you know, starting to get big everywhere. So mm -hmm. we'd be out doing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as my in musical influences, heck, I grew up listening to, um, you know, Hart, Fleetwood Mac, Juice Newton. Oh boy. <laughs> I, love Juice I, had, Newton. I had her album. We'd roller skate around in the garage. Can you sing a bar from playing with the Queen of Hearts? Oh gosh. <laughs> playing Play with the Queen, Queen of Hearts. hearts. <laughs> no one ain't really smart. There you go. Joker is the only fool. Do anything, anything for you. you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I played that religiously for years. Yeah. That's a great That was jam. one of those songs yeah. that would just pack the dance floor. Right. Juice yeah. Newton. We had her at the Wee Fest. She was nice. She was beyond high energy. That's She awesome. was amazing. I wish I could have seen her in concert. I never saw her in concert. But, um. Ah, Juice Newton. Yeah. So, um, I know those were a few of my influences growing up. Dolly Parton, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, I was kind of all over. Like, I, I liked, and still to this day, I I like a variety of genres and musicians. So, uh, In um, the time I've known you, which is, you know, a decade or so, um, it seems like you've really gotten into, I've seen you get your influences with the rock and with the country. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Erica, maybe you can tell us about the different groups that you're uh, working with now, the different music factions, I guess. Sure. Um, so as far as full bands, I'm in a really cool um, a country group. It's called Girls Night Out, tribute to the superstar women of country. And it's very popular. And, oh, yeah. oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, that's our next event, actually. Um, next Thursday, we've got an outdoor show there in St. Michael at their new amphitheater. Oh, really? Yeah, give a shout out to your co-stars. Yes, there. and that's oh, that's Jennifer Urbach and Raven Wolf, and they are amazing vocalists. Honestly, I just try to keep up with them. They're, <laughs> they're so amazing. And the whole band, um, we've got a nine-piece band. Nine? Um, nine-piece band. Wow. We've got Pedal, nine Steel, Pedal. Um, yeah, we've got, it's just, it's so much fun. So much fun and so much energy. And it's just like my dream, like, it's awesome. I'm just so happy to be a part of it because um, I don't know. I I never imagined I'd be able to, to land are. something like that, but there we go. <laughs> yeah. Do so, we have audio on that one, Danny? Okay. Because I'd love to. Look at her go on that fiddle. Oh, and that's Miss Patina. So we have a couple of different um, fiddle players we call upon. And at the time, our regular gal wasn't quite... Um, into performing at an indoor space because this was kind of when COVID hit the fan. <laughs> oh, sure. So, but yeah, Bettina's awesome on fiddle. She fills in with us every now and then. So, and that's Miss Jennifer. <laughs> Raven doing some dolly. Is oh. this, a, this must be a um, promotional video? Yes. Just chopped up a little bit? Yep, yep. What song were you doing? Because we kind of missed that. Yeah, that's okay. I was doing some Shania. Um, right. She happens to be one of my favorites to cover. She's just so sassy and fun to... Route 47. That is in uh, St. Michael, right? So that one actually is in Fridley. 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 Yep. Oh, <laughs> here, we go. here she is. Here she is. <laughs> yep, Shania. And some more Shania, yeah. Who's on the pedal there? So that's Jeff Waddleton. Like, Wal Waldeland, familiar. yep. He he plays uh, with Hitchville sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you, I mean, but he plays kind of all over. We better be careful with that, Danny, so we don't get copyright striked. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that band's a ton That's of fun. That's exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, after I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're fine. We have absolutely got to get out this summer and go and see some of these shows. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Please do. Yeah, How Heidi. often are you guys playing with that project? Um, so right now we've got a few things scheduled for summer. Um, like we've got the show next Thursday and then we've got, um, I should have had my schedule in front of me. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, we've got, you know, a casino show coming up, St. Croix Casino. Um, it's right now it's about once a month with that band. We just played at the Pioneer. Uh, is there place. a web page for the band or is yes, it just Facebook? Yes, or? it's, it's girls night out 
rockband.com. Okay, cool. So people can go there, see the schedule. That, that and then schedule should be current. Out. Yep, yep. Um, Here we go, Tom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, all the guests we've had, and there's so many good musicians we've had on. Um, we just got to fill up some of our weekends, and, or at least one of the weekend nights, and go and see them perform. Yeah. Well, it just feels so good to go out and, and I bet. see live music. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. That must be your website. Um. Yes. Yes. Isn't Danny good? Nice. <laughs> Way to go, Danny. Stomp your boots. <laughs> so we. I think I forgot to put one more additional date on there. Uh, we're working on something at the Plymouth Playhouse, which is now coming back. Nice. Cool. Um. The owners from Captains and Icanti are bringing a bunch of bands back in there um and we're trying to coordinate a date with them so that'll probably be like um, august or september but yeah slowly but surely you know we're we're getting adding some more shows so that's exciting wonderful yeah. and it's, it won't it be nice to get things back to oh, normal yes quote yes, unquote yes i mean my goodness the performers have really suffered <clears throat> we talk about the bars and the restaurants and all the different uh people that have suffered through this covid thing but i think or I can't imagine anyone being hurt as as much as the performers have, because yeah. they're just like been sitting home doing nothing. Yeah, that was crazy. Just not know. I mean, just that whole void, like, and not knowing what's like. Am I ever going to be able to do this again? Or like, what's? I mean, you know, that's maybe a little dramatic, but you know, you just kind of feel like, what the heck's happening? Or, or right. You know, because you can be replaced in an instant, or. You know, who knows how long truth. before venues get back to doing that. And it was just, I, everything That's just got taken away. That's what Emily tells me all the time. Like, you give me your <laughs> 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 Yeah, just so, kidding. yeah, it was, I was, I kind of went through a really, I was just sad. I was, and then I was, not only that, but I was sad of just everything that was happening in the world. I just kind of, yeah, it was, eh. I'm sure a lot of people felt that with everything. Mitch Gordon almost got emotional talking about, feeling like you've got your livelihood this is what you do it's yeah. how you survive and yeah. it just gets taken away from you yes exactly exactly yeah yeah i really can't imagine i really can't i don't think anyone can imagine unless you've lived through it you know yeah right well, we yeah. all have now yeah crazy it's been so a crazy tell, time tell me about this because <laughs> i'm like super interested in this yes oh my the gosh crown so jewels yes so that you see me in the back there um i sing backing vocals uh, with the Crown Jewels tribute to Queen. And let me tell you, that is so much fun. I would like is to that, see that, too. I can't um, even imagine how fun that, that would be. <laughs> uh, I love singing harmony. So learning that show was, was a huge challenge. I mean, because it's more than We Will Rock You. It's the deep cuts. It's the, you think it's going one way, and then it goes another way with their, the, the Queen has just mad vocals, you know. Um, so that was. Yeah, that Freddie, was, Freddie Mercury, one of the most amazing vocalists oh, ever. yeah. So that's a good time. And it's it's kind of fun to hang out in the back and just have a little dance party and do my backing vocals, you know. Um, Not be out front all the time? Well, yeah, it's, it is. it is. It's it's so much fun. So much it's fun. more fun and less pressure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely, gosh. So. Um, well, and yeah. you've been, like, playing with them for a long time, right? Yeah. I, it's been about, I want to say, five years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So we've got a show coming up um, next, or we, yeah, next Saturday at um, the Pioneer Place in St. Cloud. We've got a double, actually back to back, shows at six and nine p.m. So okay, yeah. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but way back in the day, when you were just a fan of theirs, didn't they like drag you on stage occasionally to do a song? I thought I remembered um, something like you talking about how you would go see them. Or am I thinking of a different I act? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I know the first time they approached me, they were like two weeks out of Moon Dance, and they're like, "Hey, can you? Do you want to be one of our backing vocals?" And they, at the time, I only knew like the popular songs, and I was like, "Oh gosh, you know that sounds really amazing." And thanks for asking me, but I don't feel like I, like I could. I could do that in that amount of time because so many of these songs I hadn't even heard and they were so intricate. And so I'd have to, I just felt like I couldn't do a good you enough job to put a lot of time in. Right. Um, but it turned out they got rained out anyway. So, um, 
but I'm yeah it's it's a it's a really fun group very talented people and it's uh it's a lot yeah. so their lead is pretty good yes Alex Parsons is is the lead and he's he plays a very good um Freddie so <laughs> he's got the chops and he's got the the attitude and the the costume changes he actually comes out in drag on one of the songs really it's with an old vacuum cleaner oh my gosh like fishnets <laughs> You gotta, oh my God! It's I, I, I just sit back and laugh. Like I can't. I'm just busting a gut like I've every time. I've got to break free. Yes, I want to break free. That's yes. what the song is. And he's got a wig <laughs> and like um, a leather skirt and. Mm -hmm. Danny, have you seen this show? <laughs> and he's like, no, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a Queen fan. And if I'm he doesn't have, if we, we usually actually just see if there's an old vacuum at the whatever <laughs> theater we're performing at, like those super old ones from like 1920, and. <laughs> If there's not, then he'll, he'll like use his mic stand, you know, because he's got that short mic stand that Freddie Mercury used to use. And he'll <laughs> he'll imitate vacuuming and the crowd just go, oh, it just they just eat it up. And, and I'm just dying in the back. It's so funny. That's so, awesome. Yeah, That'd be a fun. It's, it's show a to good see. time. It's a good time. We have to mark that on our calendar as well. I got it. So how often <laughs> do you do you play with those guys then? Um, so uh, our calendar is filling up pretty qu uh, uh, quite a bit this summer with them. Um, it's going to be about, you know, twice a month with them. So this summer. Okay. Yeah, we've got um, the Blaine Festival. We've got uh, some casinos. We've got the Pioneer. We've got the Music Room. Um, and you can find you can find all of this on. I put all of these shows That's also Jan's on place, my right? website. The music Room. Jam. What's up, the music? Um, so that's Tom Picard runs that. I don't know if you know Tom. Mm -mm. Okay. So that's actually right within the um, St. Michael Cinema. They have a separate um, ven music venue um, called the Music Room. And now an extension of that, they built a new amphitheater in the back called Summerfield Amphitheater. So you'll oh. see, be seeing a lot of bands posting about that. Like they got Shane Martin. I think Hitchville might be playing... Um, a lot of fun bands playing out there. We know summer. a few of those people, right? <laughs> <laughs> so all great people, all excellent uh, musicians. Yeah, and then I've got my acoustic duos. I play with Benjamin Ray, and I also play with ba Brandon Backstrom. So double B, B squared. Yeah, yeah. They're, everybody's like, "Who are you playing with this week?" But um, those guys are very yeah, talented they are. and lots of fun. Yeah, there's Brandon. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great promotional photo. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, I, I tell people all the time, and you can back me up, Erica, that Brandon, to me, is like the country version of Mark McGrath <laughs> because he knows more about music than anyone I've ever met. Right? He's oh, like he, a music encyclopedia. He is. That's what I was just going to say. Oh, my gosh. Yes. He just. It's amazing, that kid. Just right off up. the top of his head, like, whatever. An album, a year it was released. Right. Like, who all the band members and what their names were. Right. Just Brandon, boom, boom. Yep, yep. Wow. <laughs> He's very knowledgeable. Yeah. <laughs> pretty impressive yeah and I then ben ray actually guitar songs. player <laughs> yeah benjamin he's like multi-instrument instrumentalist mm -hmm. um yeah he's he's fantastic he's really fun to work with great friend um both really great guys so you're yeah. a multi-instrumentalist you play guitar you play keys right yes yes did you I bring do. your guitar um hmm. <laughs> it might be in the car but <laughs> we'll see well after we take the break maybe we could We'll persuade see. you to do a little ditty maybe maybe that'd be fun <laughs> yeah sure why not <laughs> uh-oh i guess i'm uh, tied to it now <laughs> it's funny those noises you hear in the background are not professional sound bites that's just danny back there drinking yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're Cheers, encouraged danny. to drink on this job <laughs> you're welcome well we had a job for many years i, I know mine for 35 years the rowdy cowboy show and uh well, not so much the wee fest because I had to be a little professional, but we got the drink while we worked. Yeah, literally, Rowdy Cowboy Show, especially. And I can't think drink. of another career other than the post office where people were allowed to do that. <laughs> 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 you know, it's one of the funny things about bands is there seems to be this real divide between acts that are there to entertain and sell drinks and just kind of be crazy. And then you got the ones that are your Jake Nelson's and your Devin Worley's that are like just doing their original stuff and supplementing with covers, but they're really trying to make it as an original artist. Yep. Yep. 
And so they're not, not necessarily drinking as much because they're really about the art and all that stuff. Right. But then you've got bands like the Queen Tribute Band, where it's like, we're just going to throw a party and do shots and just have a really good time, make sure people have fun. Right. Yeah, Boogie Wonderland comes to mind. Right. You know, bands like that. I mean, you'll do well locally if you make the cash register ring at the taverns and the events that you're performing at, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the country music scene locally, like High Noon and the Killer Hayes Seeds and some of the biggest names in the last 20 years. Those guys are almost exclusively covers. Right. But they right. would get, they would command top dollar when they play because they were so good mm -hmm. vocally, instrumentally, and their shows were so amazing. Right. You know, that, that, I was just thinking about that, looking at your um, tribute group with the three of you girls, and you said a nine piece act and all that production. I was like, what a cool show that must be. Boy, that looks like fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we have, we also have two other females. So it's, it's very, it's like girl power. Yeah. Which, um, I, I need Woo. them to be in the promo. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have, we, we always have a female fiddle player and then, um, uh, Maria Mead on bass. She's, her bass is bigger than she is. She's just a kick ass little, oh, she's just awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Can I say kick ass? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We've decided the only word that you can't use is the F bomb. Okay. And the JC. I should be able to control yeah, myself. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, but yeah, just just a fun group there. Yeah. The reason why I bring that up is because you get the best of both worlds, in that you've got these cover just party shows. Yeah. And you're also like a aspiring originals artist. Yeah, I, I do have a handful of originals out there. You do. Yeah. Well, working with the three, uh, the duo, the girl power. Uh, queen that's got to be a that has to be getting to be a full calendar um yeah it is i i try to balance it as best as i can but um yeah i mean and my you know my kids are older now so that helps um originally when i started is your daughter's the youngest right yeah she's, is, she's, she's julia 10. right yeah yeah julia 10. um but i definitely block off you know family time for cabin time and whatnot i make sure i mark well, Let's obviously, not forget Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we we have our date nights during the week sometimes. You know that works Good. too. So and he's I will I'll tell you this. He's very supportive. He's I was just gonna been. say that he is so. <laughs> all the years that we played together yeah. eons ago, he was always coming out to shows and always buying the band drinks and just so <laughs> supportive. Yeah, boy, you yeah. know if they're not, it just doesn't work. Right, right. So good for him. Yeah. My wife was uh, one that was very supportive. <laughs> yeah. Your yeah, wife's very, very, awesome. very supportive <laughs> to very all supportive. of us. Yes. Yep. Yes. As I am of her school teaching, but, you know, it's really it's, Being in the entertainment business is tough when yeah. you have a significant other oh, or a spouse. Yeah. It's, we all it, know this. It can this. be tough. Right. Yeah. I remember <laughs> when I met Lynn, I said, all right, honey, this is going well. Here's what you're going to hear. Here are the things that you're going to say about me, you know, whether it's being gay or whether it's having children or being married already and all those things that they just like to say. She would hear those things from people and she'd look at them and laugh. And they'd say, what's so funny? And she'd, they, she'd say to them, my husband told me that someone was going to say something like that to me. And it was nice that I had been doing it long enough where I could pre-warn her and that she did get it. But it was still didn't make it any easier. You know, there's, when your spouse is in the spotlight. Well, there's certainly some, I won't say negatives, but there's certainly like some other side of the spectrum when you're in the music business, when you're on the road and when you're performing live and like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not all roses. You know, what people no. see with you on stage, the finished product. Oh, yeah. It takes mean, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's, the, that's what you guys live for. Yep. All the entertainers I've met, that hour and a half on stage or two hours or one hour, that's what they live for. And I was everything like, else is all those national acts, they play an hour? No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the rest a million of bucks for their 40 minute set. <laughs> right. What's that? The million bucks for their 40 minute set. <laughs> I know. Must be rough, huh, Erica? Right, exactly. <laughs> I'll take well, that. The acts that we've given a million dollars to, we've would not give it to them unless they did at least 90 minutes. 
Okay. And then, I mean, guys like George Strait, people that have been around, you know, they get that much money. They're going to put in a whole show, and they're going to come back and do an encore. Yeah. They're not going to care how much time it is. Right. But it's amazing to me how many acts really were fussy about how many minutes. And I remember talking to one of the managers, and I said, why are they leaving earlier? Why? And why wouldn't they, they, you know, there's 50, 60,000 people there. Why wouldn't they come back and do an encore? And I was really puzzled by that. And, you know, he looked at me and he said, well, you have to realize inherently musicians are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, Erica? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, I don't know if I accepted any other answer than that one. I don't funny. think that's, that is definitely not true for this side of the couch because so. she's playing, so. you're playing in like four or five different projects. I think we work pretty hard, you know. Well, <laughs> make no mistake, I'm certainly not speaking about uh, a lot of the ones that get it all going. But the actual musicians, you know, some, they can be lazy. They want to get off stage and. Sure. And. Showing up well, late at that all point, the time. You just kind of wonder, like, is the spark gone for them? Are they just showing up to show up? You know, because yep. that, I don't know, I, that makes me sad because it's like, what an opportunity. And oh, yeah, you just, there was one time I went to a show and this, um, it was at the myth. Okay. And I'm not going to name this artist, but she's, she's pretty well known and she was obviously completely wasted on stage you were there as a, a fan yep okay and i was like wow i'm like it's cool that whatever to have a couple of drinks or something but she was clearly um clearly wasted and clearly it just didn't seem like it was really a priority for her to she be was there. mc hammered yeah <laughs> and i was like gosh i mean such an opportunity and you're like you're like don't don't really seem to yeah, care because the I'm myth is in a dive bar wasted, right? oh no it's a huge club so, that was a nice yeah. venue yeah but Tough one to make just, money at, but a great venue. Yeah. Give us a little hint. Give us initials or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no don't do I don't. Is it someone do that. that's still performing right now? Yeah. Okay, then yeah. you probably shouldn't do that. And you know, and maybe she's, maybe she just had an off night. But it seemed like there was. I was kind of reading into it, and maybe there was kind of a pattern. But, um, but yeah, you just kind of wonder, like, are they? How some people might just maybe be feeling burned out or it's just not doing anything for them anymore. And, and there's us who are like, Oh my God, I would just die to be, yeah. you know, in that spot. But yeah. In my 35 years of doing the, the Wii Fest, it was the really, really big acts, Dolly Parton, you know, um, George Strait, you know, the real big acts. I'm trying to think it was Johnny Cash, you know, Tim McGraw. The real, they got it. I mean, it's the people that got it, and they would just give everything. And then the ones that didn't get it, and kind of like that, take it for granted. Right. They don't last long. Right. Right. And they, you can't take that for granted. I mean, you can't take that love of millions of people or thousands of people. You can't take that for granted. You got to give them everything all the time, or you don't do it. It's yeah. interesting to me when you see some of the big name acts when they have especially like the inter-band drama and they just have this like i mean it's been think back to like chicago peter satara like oh, i'm gonna go do my own thing and what he had like one song that made the radio as a solo artist and it's like you burn this like iconic band right by going off and doing your own thing and it didn't work you know the managers I mean, would be well served to say to their bands it takes a particular formula whether you're a duo a single or a band, it takes a formula to make it work. You'll start eliminating any pieces of that formula, and you're just there's you're a destined for uh, to destroy yourself. There's a few in the more modern era that I you know that I could think of. One of them is um, uh, I just had on the tip of my tongue now. Jennifer Nettles and Christian Bush. Bush, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was their act called again? Sugar, Sugar Land. Land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, huge, right? Yeah. They're back and together. Then they, well, that's because they both tried to do solo things and <laughs> crazy, like failed. And yeah. I mean, Jennifer Nettles, amazing vocalist, one yeah. of the best oh, female vocalists of yeah, our time, right? Absolutely. And she crashed and burned in spectacular fashion as a solo artist. And it really wasn't her fault. There was her people saying, oh, I think, you know, 
you should just do this by yourself. I know Christian was pretty hurt about to. that because I had the chance Christian to chat with him. Christian was a great guy. Yeah, just a great dude. guy. Outstanding. And She's and clearly the talent in the band, vocally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was, it was that formula. They just had the him perfect mix her. of voices. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So he didn't have to be that powerhouse because he could just blend her perfectly all the time. Right. I guess we're not talking about anything new, but there was a, <laughs> there was egos a, and uh, there was pride a female, gets involved. A female duo like six or eight years ago that had one that was, I want to say John Deere was the name or something like that. Wild Orchids or something. What was Wild it? Wild Rose was a long time ago. That was yeah, this 20 is just, years ago, 30 years we, ago. They had one just monster hit, and Jane, they were... Jane Deere Girls? That's it. Thank you, Jane okay. Deere Girls. What yeah, is it? They had like, Jane Deere Girls? They had like one or two really big songs, and then they like had some kind of inner band fight and broke up, and it was oh, like... Oh, okay. Uh, I kind of uh, wonder what happened to them, because I... They caught my attention, and I thought... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they... What was it? Uh, what was their big one? Wildflower. That was the one yes. that was, like, huge. Oh, yeah, I remember them. I remember that. Can you s- just sample oh. Wildflower quick? Yeah. Refresh our memory. But, yeah, so they came... They hit the scene, and Wildflower, I think, was their biggest... Their first big cut. We were, you know, obviously putting miles on it every Monday night. I can do that. <laughs> you, you can do that. With your... I can't do that. <laughs> Look at that truck. Well, they're talking about the vocal. Like, you could do that, no problem. <laughs> the trampoline. This is perfect for your range. Oh, this is fun. What is that blonde's name? I don't know. Anyway, so they they were literally on the scene for, like, what did that? Uh, the, what's did their wiki mean? say, really quick? Uh, it says 2004 to 2012, but that's that's a damn lie. Here we go. It says 10 to 12. Yeah, right, bef- right below it, it says years active, 04 to 12. But it was really that 10 to 12. It was just a couple years because they had a few singles that they released that were really great. And they and just like um, Jennifer and Christian, they sounded amazing together, but then had some kind of, I don't know, disagreement and blew the whole project up. I'm like, what? It, that's that so sucks. crazy. Yeah. Such talent. Oh, it, and a mosquito. <laughs> you know, I saw that mosquito. <laughs> like, the first one of the year. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it's it, anyway. So not to get like long winded, but that's that's always crazy to me when you see people with that kind of talent and they let really petty stuff get in the way. Mm-hmm. They let their egos and their pride get in the way, and that's the bottom line. And it's deadly sin. It's too darn bad, right? You know, it's just too bad that they don't sit down with a psychologist beforehand and say, "Here's what's going to happen. Here's how you need to handle it." Well, you know, speaking don't of egos, let your ego get in the way. Yeah, speaking of egos, TK. <laughs> what? <laughs> Erica has like none. What? You seriously are like the most humble person I've ever like known or worked with. Oh my gosh. Okay. You, I mean, seriously, she's, <laughs> she's the type of person. She's that so soft spoken <laughs> and so complimentary of everybody all the time. And I mean, even back in the day when we worked together, I mean, I was not a good person to work with because I was so like you know <laughs> schedule like. <laughs> You, you know so how I am. Like, my brain is so, I'm so linear. That's how my brain works. Does anyway. linear have anything to do with hitting on her? No. <laughs> no. She was married and I, I, was, going, where you were I was going through girlfriends like laundry in, back in the day. <laughs> it was tough to find one that could like understand what it was to be and on And you were road. married? Yes. She was married. Yes. And she marked, he, how long have you marked her He was her respectful of that? Um, 20, uh, 21 years. I was. Yeah. Gosh, after you get past 20, it's like, what is it? Oh, 21, yeah. 21. Yep. I'm sure you were. I was. You were a quality, outstanding young man. Yes, absolutely. Pleasure to work with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, so we we should probably talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Maybe broach that. How do we meet, Erica? (laughs) So, so after I... Can I I get a coaster assist? (laughs) Yeah. Me too. I dropped Um, mine. So I just kind of had this wild and crazy idea one day that I would Thank you. audition to be the lead singer in a country band because I, I don't, I just, I couldn't get it off my mind. I was like, I want to do something, but I don't really know how to go about it. And so I was looking at Craigslist. This is back when people used Craigslist. Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> For one, stuff other than <laughs> inappropriate massages. Yeah. Facebook was not a thing at the time. I, I don't, I don't even think I had a cell phone. Um, but yeah, I was on Craigslist and I saw, you know, female 
lead female singer wanted for country band. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is like 2007? 2007, I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, sure, why not? So uh, I got a hold of you, did the audition. And Killed it, by the way. <laughs> not only because she's a great vocalist, but like everyone just loved her. She oh. was so sweet. They were all like, we... Like, as soon as you left the room, they were all like, you have to hire her. Oh, well, I felt like, like I, I was know. like, I was like, oh, my gosh, it was it was just kind of crazy. Like, am I really doing this? And then uh, you literally called me. Oh, I did have a cell phone because you called me on the way home and I answered it in the car. So there you go. Um, like, hey, you and said, hey, you're in you're like, are you serious? You know. That was when fun. it was okay to talk and drive fun, at the same fun, time. Fun. <laughs> I'd hold up cell phone, yeah. my flip phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> just let me get this antenna up really quick. <laughs> That's how long it was. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far from the truth, probably. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, this seems like technology 15 years ago. <laughs> no kidding. So, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, we just we started the band and literally started from the ground up. I mean... Do you remember our first gig in uh, Wisconsin? <laughs> Which one was it? It was just a super dive bar. Um, and I think we each made like $40. Not, no, <laughs> I, come on, Wisconsin doesn't um, have any dive bars. I, I remember that gig. It was gig. in Wisconsin. And there was Did like nobody a, there. Was it, was Did it we get hotel rooms part? Oh, <laughs> no. that's right. <laughs> um, I can't tell you the name of it. but I, You know one thing that I remember about that gig? is I just got all that lighting and didn't think because I was new to, you know, <laughs> I mean, I've been a DJ and MC my whole career up until that point. So I wasn't thinking about production. So I didn't put any lights in front of us. We just had like a wall of lights behind oh, us. Right. Yeah. So anyone that, you know, the whole three people that watched us that weekend, <laughs> they're like out, out in front and we're all like basically silhouettes because <laughs> of all the lighting. So we sounded great. Thought that was see pretty us. cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You can do weird things with lighting. People don't know. Where part of Wisconsin were you at? Gosh, um, was it know? Eau Claire? Yeah, I think so. That sounds okay. right. Okay. Um, well, there's it, a fair it, I might just yell it out randomly later. Cause it'll... <laughs> Michael <laughs> Tourette's? Ah, I remember. <laughs> um, dang it, yeah. It was in that back room. Remember that? Yes. It was like the, the bar <laughs> was like, a, in back room. like an L. <laughs> And the whole front side was like bar seating tables and stuff. And then you keep going all the way to the end of the building. And then they had this like hallway that was yep, yep. 20, fu- 20 the, feet wide. The bathrooms on either side. Yep. And then all the way in the back was the like stage. So we're all the way in the back of this L end playing. I think I have video of that. Those you, have got to be great memories. All. You know what's cool about that weekend too is that we had just hired Brandon right before that too. Yes. Because remember, he gave himself like blood blisters on his fingers oh, learning. Yes, I think that was his list. first gig with us. It was. Yes. Fun. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so good he, memories. He plays with Brandon. That's the we Brandon. We play Baxter. together now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, and, and he was in my mom's um, contemporary uh, choir at church. So there nice. we go. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's all connected. Well, that church <laughs> equation has been the start of many. Many major talents. Yeah, you yeah. know, people starting in a choir, singing in church, playing the piano. Yeah, I mean, I can just think of they just rolling off Faith Hill. I mean, and Aretha. You know, it just goes on and on and on how people got their start in church, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah, great place to start. <laughs> yeah, it is. What was the band called? Uh, our first band, yeah, North Gone South. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm creeping online. Yeah, North so Gone South. I don't think you'll find. I think there is one video on YouTube from Trappers in Circle Pines. Circle Pines. Yeah. With, I think it's Brandon doing vocals on it, but it's, uh, I think that's the only one still out there. Trappers had a nice setup, nice stage. Yeah. Not real big, though. You no, know, it was a, just this triangle. We were a six piece. Yep. And yep. it was pretty tight for yeah. us yep. in most places. Yeah. Yeah, not a not a bad venue though, compared to some of them. Yeah, it no. was it was it was good. We had some. Uh, I was just gonna say we had some very like we could sit and tell stories about some of the crazy gigs that we've done that kind of thing, but the one that you mentioned earlier I think would be a fun story for you to share with folks. Oh, here we go. What is this? Oh, that's North Carolina South. Okay. Is it? Yes, yep. that's us. And okay, and so Greta. that now wait a second. That's, that's Greta, right? I think that might have been you. after you left the band. Okay. 
So that, I was gonna say, that might have been six wheel drive actually. It was. It that's what the folder said. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yep. So that was uh, so that was when we transitioned to six wheel drive. Yep. Oh yeah. So Jeremy and Brandon. Greta, the, Brandon. Who was playing? Um, is it Toby? Toby? And wow, Scotty Toby. on drums. That's at the old Pavlitsky's. Look at that ceiling. Is that you playing fiddle? No, that's Greta. Oh, okay. um, she is now um, a teacher. She played for the Johnny Home Band. She, oh, really? She decided to part ways, ways with us and, and play with the Johnny Home Band. But you know what? She didn't last there very long. She didn't. It wasn't for her. Their What's schedule going on with Johnny crazy. Holmes? Is he still happening? He's, yeah, he's still doing his thing. <laughs> what an amazing yeah. longevity. Um, his daughter, Jordan, I think, is kind of primary front she, now, right? Yes. she. Yep. I know he did that she's Las Vegas stint. Very active on social media, too. With, um, She's got some original tunes and whatnot. But, um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting about Jordan, not to like divert, but rabbit holes are what we're all about. Um, Jordan Holmes, Johnny's daughter, when she first got into the band, she didn't, her chops were, yeah, they were a little questionable. She was probably pretty young. Yeah, you she know. was 15, 16, yeah. something like so, that. But being around, you know, all the different mm-hmm. people that have been with Johnny, and of course Johnny's, you know, he's right. got chops. Right. But like like Corey White was with them as their lead guitar player for a while. Now wait a minute. Um so Corey played with us. I didn't know he was with Johnny Home for a little while. Yeah, he was. Oh geez. He never told us that. So he, he actually played with us at our last gig, um, with Girls Night Out. So. Oh, okay. But yeah, he's a cool guy too. Well, he's got gray hair now, but. Oh wait, no. Yeah. Okay, so this is Corey Ray White. Maybe it's a different Corey White. How old is your Corey Ray White? Oh, he's probably my age. Yeah, same like guy. Like forties. Same guy. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, back in the day, he just had black hair and. Okay. Cool. And last time I thought I saw him on social media, I thought he had some salt and pepper going on. Okay, so he <laughs> and then he's got his own. He's got the. Tribute to Yacht Rock thing going. Yes. That's the same Corey White. Same guy. Okay, good. Uh, he didn't tell us that he played with Johnny Home. That's cool. He did. All right. Yeah, he was Johnny's lead guitar player for okay. a while. Cool. Shane, oh, hey, there we are. Shane. Yes. Right. Oh, so that is, and that's at the old Melvin's in Spicer, which is now, I think, Zorba's or something. <laughs> Can you believe that she knew what that that's, was? Yes, Just that was glance. New Year's Eve at Melvin's in Spicer. I which, still have that hat. Is that you? So that's I'm in, I'm in the middle. Um, that's actually Greta, our fiddle player. There's Shane, and um, then there's Erica. And Greta. Oh gosh, I was like, that, that was has to be Shane. That, that was um, that's the only Shane. Go back to that other picture. That Look at my more, baby that face. That looks more like Shane right there. That's Toby. <laughs> that was our bass player. <laughs> um, oh, funny guy. Gosh, that was probably 2009. So that's like oh gosh, that was a long time. It, well, well, that would have been or 2000. Yeah. It would have been 2008. Eight. Because that's yes. when I went to Roddy Cowboy. That's show. right. And then we kind of transitioned to six wheel drive, and then six wheel drive to to Maiden, Maiden Dixie. Dixie, yes, which that's a whole other story. <laughs> I, I told that story to I don't remember who we had on the sofa at the time we were talking about the it might have been Lady Joe talking about that really cool transition of that the North gone South mm-hmm. and how it ultimately ended up being Maiden Dixie when Jesse and Drew and the other M- McNally Smith, yeah. Yeah, okay. I said I said Rand McNally in the episode because <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> no, 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 it's not that McNally Smith folks. You know, they're yeah. all mid- music school kids. Yeah, and very talented musicians, obviously, For all sure. of them. Oh. Look what I found! Oh, oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, you got the sideburns going. Do you know what Erica's doing right there? She's playing piano. I am. Yeah. It looks She's like, a multi instrumentalist. Yeah, yeah, that looks like uh, New Year's Eve because I've got a party hat on. Yes. Same show. Like yep, same show. Yes. Um, looks like I was adjusting the settings, but yes, I do play some keys as well. You have Man, a very I... well organized Facebook. Can I say that? <laughs> Good job. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is like my. It's funny that you're totally creeping on it right now. hundred <laughs> percent creep right now. It's like my disgusting reminder of my lack of ass. <laughs> I'm cursed, Tom. Oh my gosh. Not on the other side either. <laughs> Greta was so I don't know. Fun. I got four kids. I think it's working okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yeah, is a good it time. just as you get older, it sucks in further. Oh, my <laughs> wife told me that. I guess that runs in my family. I have an uncle that passed a few years ago. Loved him. He was my godfather, but he had no butt. His <laughs> legs went right up to his waist. That you know what they call that, Tom? What do they call that? They call it frog butt. Frog butt. <laughs> Where your yeah. like hips start turning out, and your butt goes up in, and you start walking a little higher on your. 
Eels? <laughs> I think it's happening to me. <laughs> My wife's back there laughing her ass off. She's dying. Me. She's going, yeah, it's happening to you. <laughs> You're supposed to say, I like your cute little butt. <laughs> Frog butt, huh? Oh, Lord. I wonder how we many warned people... you, Erica. We warned you this is going to go down I some rabbit I wonder how many holes. people have turned I off this uh, podcast in the last five minutes. None. <laughs> now they're captivated. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I, I just thought it would be kind of cool for you to share that particular story of... Um, oh, so when we were playing at the Blue Goose. The Blue Goose. The Blue Goose. You guys probably know... it's the... a cool story. Yeah, the Blue Goose. When you mentioned the Blue Goose... And everybody's ears that are above a certain age are going to light up. Because right. Everybody's got stories from the Blue Goose. Oh, do they ever. <laughs> so we were scheduled to play there uh, back in 2008. It was a weekend gig, right? Yeah. And they gave us like a, a cabin mm -hmm. that was within walking distance of the Blue Goose. And it was just a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And people, there's it probably some people out there like, yes, I stayed in that band cabin too. It was a total <laughs> shithole. Um, there's a lot of heads nodding. Hey, right it now. was, it was a free place to stay, right? It was. Um, so, um, <laughs> all of a sudden he gets rushed to the hospital, uh, that morning we were supposed to play and, uh, had kidney stones. Who did you did? Yeah. So he was up in what Aiken. Uh, yeah. So we, we played Friday night. Oh, wait. Yeah, we had the show Friday night, and then Saturday, Saturday morning I woke up, and I was just in excruciating pain. That sucks. And I had our roadie, roadie Rob. <laughs> Drive you up there, you up and all of a sudden we got the update, and we're like, oh, crap. Well, we're, we've got another show tonight, and uh, Jeremy and Brandon, they didn't do a whole lot of lead, but hey, guess what, guys? <laughs> You're jumping in. Who wants to sing what? <laughs> you know? So um, so we just we How made it work. we in the hospital? Just a few hours, you know, once they, well, there was like a little bit of a panic because when they were, uh, when they got me in there, initially we went, what, what, what little town is that in? Garrison. 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 So we're in Garrison. Right. We went to the clinic there first. And they took you up to Aiken? And this is the, well, this is the first time I'd ever had kidney stones before. So I didn't know what was going on. I just realized that right. I was in this pain and it was getting worse and worse and worse. So I'm like hyperventilating, which is causing my muscles to start to seize because I'm not getting enough oxygen. I would think Brainerd might have been a little closer. Well, so they ended up calling a transport, an ambulance, and transported me to wherever. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and then they took there the whole time there. They're like, you got to slow your breathing down. You got to slow your breathing down. And, Up in Aiken? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we once we got there, then they were like, they did a act not X-ray, MRI or whatever. And said, yeah, congratulations, you're having a kidney stone. <laughs> and I was like, that sucks. And then they gave me some drugs. So then later that night, these guys are already playing. And I went to the show higher than hell on <laughs> That's right. You, I couldn't remember if you actually Did you came. perform at all? No. Oh, that's no, when you're was, at your best. I was in, I was in the front row just stoned. You were high stoned. as a kite. Yep. <laughs> and I'm watching that. her and Brandon and Jared <laughs> and Jeremy just trade leads. And I'm laughing because they're up on stage just you know, laughing at each other and having fun. And yeah, it, it worked out, but I mean, too bad you had to get k kidney stones, yeah. but, um, yeah, that's a crazy story. And that whole, that van cabin, oh my God, <laughs> like the beds were like, it smelled like this. bad. <laughs> it, was, it was nasty. It was nasty. Oh. <laughs> you ever seen any, any nasty places, TK? Oh God. <laughs> you yep. can say it. You can say it. <laughs> well, she stayed in a few hunting camps with me, yes. like uh, one in Wisconsin where the mouse kept picking his, poking his head out of the hole of the mattress. <laughs> and she said, I don't know if I want to share a bed with that mouse. Oh, no. I said, he won't eat much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we, she toughed it out. We had some, some rat holes that we had to stay in <laughs> over the years. I'm trying to think of there was one club that we played that also – they gave they gave us it was like attached to a motel. Oh, the commander. Commander. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun weekend, but the like rooms are. Yeah, I mean, they weren't like the one. They were okay, but they were just they weren't like. <laughs> this is the kind of Anything motel special. where they'll let you rent a room for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> right. They got the machine with the quarter on the side. With the bed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was that kind of place. Like we brought a cooler full of liquor because we we're like, 
not all not all the places we played would give us booze. Some places right. we played when we'd finish, they'd be like, "Here, take a case of beer if we're staying on site." And then other places they wouldn't. So that particular trip, we'd gotten the heads up from our booking agent that we weren't going to get any stuff. So we ended up bringing a cooler or a couple of coolers full of stuff. I remember one of the guys got so hammered they passed out in the bathtub. I'm trying to remember <laughs> which one of the guys it was. Uh, it was hilarious. Who knows? Shane, at another time, remind me to tell a gallstone story. It is one of the funniest stories that I've ever been a part of in my entire life. <laughs> gallstone. Not now. It's, it's, it's going to be a... Stay it's tuned be a good yeah. 10, for the gallstone story. It's going to be a good 10, 15-minute <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you uh, the principal of the story was Bob Hatton, who owned the, Bor <clears throat> excuse me, the Burnsville Bowl. And it was up uh, where we deer hunt, and it was hilarious. Funny story for another time. All right. Yeah. All right. And I, I do that often with my wife, and because if I don't have people remind me, then I typically forget. <laughs> yeah. So Erica, Shane, when you play with <laughs> um, Brandon and Ben, does Ben mix into that, or is it like a duo and a duo? It's How does that work? separate duos. Okay. Yep. And are the projects different as far as music yeah um i mean we're both pretty much variety um but we i threw sometimes I'll, depending on the venue i might throw a couple of my originals in there and same with benjamin it depends though it depends on the venue if it's more of a listening venue then yeah but if it's more like people want to sing along then we just do covers so or listen whatever um but yeah we we both acts do a variety of stuff so okay yeah. cool and when you do, I know, I, I guess I haven't seen that I can recollect off the top of my head the promo for when you're playing with Benjamin, but like with Brandon, you bring your keys, right? Yeah, I play keyboard and some guitar in that okay. duo, in both duos, actually. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Because I know Brandon plays acoustic and electric. What else does he play? Um, that's, that's all Brandon plays, but he, he does lead and harmony as well. Yeah. And yeah, he's then, got great harmony. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Benjamin plays guitar. He plays harmonica. He's got a little, like, um, kick pedal going. He plays keys. Um, it's kind of cool because halfway through our set, we actually switch spots, and he plays keys, and I play guitar. And Oh, cool. We do kind of a cool version of uh, What's Up by the Four Non Blondes. And really? He, he's doing the keys, and I'm doing the guitar. And it's, it's kind of a cool, cool moment. So, yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. I would love to see that. Well, we're definitely going to have to put some gigs on our schedule and get out. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we have to. Yeah. We yes, have to. live I music mean, is back. Yay. We have to see you at least twice this summer. Yay. We have to see the Queen thing, and we have to see the Women of Country. The Women Rule show. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Girls Night Out. I'll tell you what, Lynn and I are watching uh, some Netflix uh, movies, and women are all over. I mean, there's a movie we're watching right now called The 100. The women are yes. the rulers of the world. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> I guess I've always known that. Yes. We're going to have to take a break here, um, as much fun as we're having. But we'll obviously come back and continue the fun. But before we go to break, I want to tell a really quick story. Yep. The first time that you invited me on social media, obviously, because that's where it's done now, um, to a girls' night out thing. I was so confused because I was like, I'm not a chick. Like, what? <laughs> like, I thought it was like a party she was having at her place or something. An invitation. Yeah, I did, like I didn't get it that it was a, an act. You well, know, she it was knew a band. you better than most. Well, that's true. It took me a long time. Yeah, who knows? I yep. did have the fanciest jeans on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys are always invited to the girls' night out. <laughs> like why not? And why wouldn't they want to go? My goodness. Right, exactly. Three beautiful women with amazing voices. Yeah. And a great show. There's always been so much talent in Minnesota. I can't wait to see you guys perform. Cool. Well, yeah. I can't wait to have you out. Well, stick around, Honor. folks, because uh, in just a few minutes, we'll be right back with Erica to continue talking about her music career and all the things that she's got going on. And, and as she's already committed, she will play <laughs> a song for us. And so we'll be back in just a few minutes with Erica Hansen.
Boots and Backstraps is proudly brought to you by Homes by Shane. Making your move with the Homes by Shane team means an unparalleled customer service experience. That level of service is the foundation of this REMAX Results referral-based business. Our driven team of experts communicate with their clients every step of the way, ensuring a memorable experience from the first conversation through your closing day. Go to homesbyshane.com for more information. Let's get you home. If you would like to sponsor the Boots and Backstraps podcast or you have an interest in joining our team, send us an email to bootsandbackstrapspodcast at gmail.com. Come on now. All right, folks. Tom jumping the gun again. (laughs) Uh, Welcome back to Boots and Backstraps. As you can see, we still have Erica with us, thankfully. Hello. Howdy. Yeah, she's got to be in charge, so otherwise Tom and I are going to go off the rails. That's right. Yeah, but that's fun. It's fun that way. Erica, I would say you've been the most delightful guest that I think Aww. we've ever had here. You're well, just thank a pleasure. You. You're a pleasure to visit with. You're, like Shane said earlier, you're very humble and uh, modest, and you're uh, hiding a wonderful, wonderful talent. And we're going to get an opportunity to listen to her. <laughs> Yeah, but before that, I'm going to pick on Tom. Okay. Did you hear him say, visit with you? <laughs> visit. You know yes. where I'm going with that, right? Right. You, you just dated yourself. <laughs> Evidently, I do that a lot. Uh, what was the last one? Uh, we're going to ship it? Ship it, yeah. He's talking about emailing. He goes, can't you just ship it to me? We are like, what? <laughs> like UPS? No, with the computer. Somebody <laughs> please come to my defense and say, when you've wanted someone to email you something you have, please say that you've said, just ship it to me. Crickets. Crickets. Just ship it to me over the internet. Send it maybe. We'll give you like a little gray area there, but ship, no. Okay, so visiting with... uh, 60 plus. Erica. People that say visit. What's wrong with saying that? Hang out with, chat. Visit. Visit. (laughs) See, now Lynn gets it. She's like, oh yeah, now I know what you mean. Yeah. I went on over to my... Uncle's house, and we visited for a minute. <laughs> You're going to get it right now. One good <laughs> nut of yours, I swear. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I may not be done with it, Tom. Just leave, um, her, be. leave her be. I'm just trying to think. I, I've heard Jimmy Fallon say, you know, it's been so great visiting with you uh, to one of his guests. There's nothing well, wrong with He looks that. good for 90. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Erica. Oh, okay. You got the six string I'm out. I'm play, I guess. So tell us what you're going to play. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and play the very first song that I wrote and recorded um, about three years ago. Uh, it's just a good old country love song. It's called Getaway. And it's just, uh, like I said, a good old country love song about um, getting away with the person you love. All right, fantastic. All right. Lying here thinking about you, waiting on the sun to rise Seems like it's been way too long since I looked into those eyes I need to feel your love again, I know you're feeling it too Today is ours, baby, and I know just what we can do Just throw your guitar on top of mine We'll drive for miles in the warm sunshine Love a song playing on the radio Hold me close, don't let go Just loving and laughing Nothing to fear Let's get away from here Driving through the county line Feels so good, your hand in mine Why can't every day be just like this? Pit stop down by the river somewhere You know half the fun is getting there Lay a blanket under the maple tree Then I'll give you some of that sugar, baby Just throw your guitar on top of mine We'll drive for miles in the warm sunshine Love song playing on the radio Hold me close, don't let go Just loving and laughing Nothing to fear Let's get away from here 
I don't care what they say We belong together Wouldn't want it any other way Just throw your guitar on top of mine We'll drive for miles in the warm sunshine Love song playing on the radio Hold me close, don't let go Just loving and laughing Nothing to fear Let's get away from here get away from here Yeah, let's get away from here Yes! <laughs> Fantastic! Thank you! That Thanks. was fabulous! <laughs> oh. I was nervous! Ah. No, great song! Really well, you great. can't be nervous Thank around you. us. No, I, you don't make me nervous, but all of a sudden performing... Like live in front of a camera, it's like ah. <laughs> but oh, thank you. I'm glad you wonderful. enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, very much so. Really Do you great. want to take a minute to? Put, you should probably put that in the case. I just don't want it to fall over. Don't let it go too or far. Or Lynn, would you mind grabbing it? That's good. I can. She can I put don't it know. Back. If we should let that get away. Okay. Maybe we'll have her do another. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I won't say no. Uh, um, let's chat a little bit. Let's take a break. Yeah, let's ah. definitely chat. You have yourself a drink. Yeah, cheers. A little sip of wine, and that was fun. It was fun. To see that wonderful talent on our show was uh, pretty impressive. So that that's the first single you've done? Yeah, that was... I think I remember hearing that one, your recording of it online. Yep, I, I uh, recorded that at Winterland Studios over in uh, New Hope uh, with uh, Todd Fitzgerald. And um, just wonderful, um, wonderful place to record a song. Um, great experience. Uh, recorded that with Benjamin Ray. Okay. I was like, how he many did, pieces did you have yeah, in that? So he, he actually did the guitar work on that song. And then we had a, a studio musician come in as well and um, do the uh, Percussion. the drums and stuff. Yep. So Good. But he did the the acoustic and electric on that one. So Did, he, did you do your own backing vocals then? Yep. Yep. Cool. I mean, nobody blends better with you than you, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it was a great experience. Yeah. So that's that's on Spotify if you want to give it a listen, the full band version, Getaway. So yeah. <laughs> it's under Erica Hansen, obviously. Yeah. Yep. So how many singles have you like legitimately recorded in studio? Um, four. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've got. Uh, uh, getaway i've got living on lake time which is a song about that's another great one going up north in minnesota um living on lake time living on lake time yeah cool. <laughs> you know i we all I, i'm blessed to have had or been able to go up to the cabin every year since i was born my grandparents um, bought a cabin in hackensack minnesota uh-huh. and now I bring my family there. And it's Hacky just, Sack. Is that a real sack, place? Hackensack, yeah. So. Hackensack was the first place I ever went up north when I was in grade school. Really? A friend of mine in grade school, they had a cabin up in Hackensack, and I'd never been up in northern Minnesota. And it seemed like it took forever to get there. <laughs> and I vividly remember the smells and the trails, and yeah. it was quite an experience for me. Yeah, beautiful. Hackensack, yep. yeah. Now, do, they, do you guys still own that property? Yep. Is that really? the one you go to? Yeah. Because I was like, I see all the time that you're escaping to yes. go to the cabin. So is that one you and Mark bought, or is that family property? It's 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 in the family. Yep. It's just our whole family. So you share that with it. siblings and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yep. My mom and my brother's family, my sister's family, and now we're we're growing. Fun. <laughs> my niece just had a baby, and it's like, oh my wow. gosh, like we're just, but it it's. Uh, we remodeled and expanded, so we can usually fit everybody. So, <laughs> Which lake are you on? Ten Mile. Ten Mile. Yeah. How long does it take you to get there from the Twin Cities? I want to say <laughs> Depends on if Mark hours. drives or I drive. <laughs> ah, yes. If I drive, it takes two hours and 40 minutes. If he drives, it's more like three. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Sorry, the granny Mark. thing, huh? <laughs> Ten and two with his, hand on the, yeah, or his right. head on the windshield. <laughs> yeah. No, they and they've actually, they've improved some of the roadways going through there so you're not you know stopping through Brainerd anymore they've got the right the bypasses and stuff so it's it's actually yeah it's it's a smooth ride so yeah great yeah I was kind of getting confused as to where Hackensack was I now remember Lynn and I 
lived in Pillager for about 11 years. Oh, okay. You know, that bypass is nice. and um, Up by, you go through Pine City, right? Pine River, yeah. Pine River. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and we're just, just it's just south of Walker. So. Right, right. This guy, seriously, Ram McNally in his head. <laughs> I mean, we have these guests on, and we're talking about Montana or Wyoming or whatever. Oh, yeah, I remember that little town and that little bar in the town. And, right. yeah, the uh, guy that works at the you know, chief of police, his name is X, and it's just like, geez, Tom, <laughs> amazing to me. It is amazing that I can remember some things. <laughs> well, all that stuff is impressive. That's I, awesome. We, you know, we Tom and I hunt together. Mm -hmm. And we take a handful of trips a year. And every single time we go hunting, we always run into someone that either he knows or knows him. Yeah. It's the most oh. amazing thing. Like, <laughs> the last year we went uh, out to Colorado, which was a couple years ago, elk hunting. And we hooked up with his buddy, John Basinger. Yep. And we're standing in, I can't remember what the, the sporting goods place was. It's not really sporting goods, but a little hunting shop to get our licenses. And we're standing yep. in line. And somebody, so, yeah, some. <laughs> somebody comes walking over are you tomcat yeah and they just started chatting i'm nice. like it's ridiculous he's a legend can't go anywhere <laughs> well i've always said there's a fair amount of people that know who i am but most of them have a drinking problem <laughs> <laughs> it's only a problem if you don't have anything to drink <laughs> oh. more like a drinking solution yeah we are in aruba i lived in aruba for a brief time my wife and i were on our honeymoon and you think we could get away to Aruba? Some guy rolls up to us. Hey, are you Tomcat? <laughs> I, I don't You're know. Like, are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The uh, correct answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, that sounded fairly boastful, and I didn't mean it to. Well, it's just the reality of the situation. <laughs> I've run into some of that, not to that extent, but Emily comments about how it seems like, at least locally anywhere, everywhere we go, we run into someone that knows me or knows yeah, us. Yeah, I can imagine you get around the massage parlors. And <laughs> <laughs> it always comes those, back around. Those brass pole places. <laughs> None of that for me, man. I, <laughs> we I don't watching, like having to get the shots when you leave. <laughs> what was the, uh, what's the show, Lynn, that we watch? Family Feud. Get my penicillin on the way out. Here you go. <laughs> right. We're watching Steve Harvey on the Family Feud, and he's got a gal up there. And what's your favorite dance move? And that girl says, Dad be sliding down the pole, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, uh, there was another program back in the day. I'm sure you're, you probably remember this, um, where they would have the, the, it was a husband and wife thing and they'd have the one of the spouses on the stage oh, and they'd yeah. ask them a bunch of questions and yep, they'd get yep, them off yep. the stage and bring the other one out and see how many they could get correct right and uh the question was real innocent like where's your favorite place to make oh. love to your spouse <laughs> and the in the butt bob <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the, <laughs> the wife without hesitation that'd be in the butt bob <laughs> And it was just oh, like his face is instantly six shades. Oh, that's of on. You can pull that up right now <laughs> on YouTube. On YouTube, and <laughs> if you Danny just type in that'd be no. in the butt box. Do we really <laughs> need in the butt box? Right <laughs> do we? I don't know. I think we do. It was it was hilarious <laughs> because oh. obviously that's not where they were supposed to be going with that whole conversation. And... I, I'm not going to lie. I've seen it, and I'm pretty sure it's, where's the strangest place you've ever made love? Oh, right. In the butt, Bob. <laughs> that mean the butt, Bob. <laughs> I might say that at home, oh randomly. In the butt, Bob. <laughs> it's oh. fantastic. Oh, Lord. So, you know, so, with all this giggling and stuff, you know, Erica, would you be so kind to do one more song for us? Um, sure. Can I get my capo real quick? It's just in my guitar case, if you just open that up. I think... I hope I'm not interrupting or going off cue here, but I I just That's loved it. loved hearing your last song and well, thank you. I think our uh, listeners would love to hear sure, another one you from so you. As a matter of fact, I think we could have spent the last hour here <laughs> listening to you perform. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Yes. All right. Key change. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm a very novice guitar player. I'm not. I just kind of. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> I mean, I'm never going to be like one of those fancy picking, but um, you pick the I, right I've genre enjoyed, for. I tell you, I've enjoyed learning guitar and just being able to um, learn some songs on my own. And how many chords do you know? Uh, well, 
I don't know, probably like 10. Well, then <laughs> you Hank only Jr. need like four, right? <laughs> Hank <laughs> Jr. can't song. criticize you because according <laughs> to him, any uh, three-chord playing uh, honky-tonk drinker could uh, make it in country music <laughs> at one point. Well, that's what I was going to say. Country music is synonymous with real simple melody. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, you know, country music's all about, you know. Um, okay, so I'm going to do one more original for you. And I'm going to do the Living on Lake Time. Great. That's cool. I was going to request that. <laughs> I didn't want to put any pressure on you. Hopefully Shane, I remember all the cards. Shane, you a little more <laughs> juice in my ear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta... Thank you. I, I know. know. So I'm kind of singing to the side here, so I'll, I'll do my best um, while trying to, you know. Um, so, yeah, this song I wrote about um, going up north in Minnesota or wherever you're, you know, Wisconsin. Hey, you know, we can't forget Wisconsin, but, uh, um, well, football season, we forget. Well, it. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's called living on Lake time. Hop in the car, come as you are. We're going to leave it all behind. Cruising along on 371. I'm ready to chill and unwind Got a playlist in hand with a rock and roll band We're singing along the sweet child of mine No need to hurry, we've got no worries We're living on Lake Time Living on Lake Time And feeling oh so fine Floating around with a drink in a hand In the warm sunshine Living on Lake Town You can sleep till half past nine You got no worries Living on Lake Town Your Life is too busy Down in the city People are running too fast No working today Ain't no way Just kick off your shoes and relax We've got cold margaritas Homemade sangria Let's hop on the pontoon and take a ride No need to hurry We've got no worries We're living on Lake Town Living on Lake Town And feeling oh so fine Floating around with a drink in a hand In the warm sunshine Living on Lake Town You can sleep till half past nine You've got no worries Living on Lake Town Everybody living on Lake Town and feeling oh so fine. Floating around with a drink in a hand in the warm sunshine. Living on Lake Town, you can sleep till half past nine. You've got no worries living on Lake Town. You've got no worries living on Lake Time. You pass me a koozie, I'm living on Lake Time. Oh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Shane, whether you grew up in Chicago, <laughs> Milwaukee, at the Twin Cities, we all relate to that song. For sure. That could have been a that could have easily been a Jimmy Buffett song singing about the ocean run. Here we are in the Midwest singing about uh, lakes. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, the koozie drop at the end is yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic because everybody's got a drawer full of them. Right? <laughs> from different events you've been at or wedding receptions yeah. or Oh, I just went through a bunch from to get a can out here. Yep. I was just looking at those yesterday, and our junk drawer is like, there's like 15 of them in here, and we maybe use one occasionally. I don't know why, like, we're, you know. So you always think, I'm going to use them. Right. 
No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you go to a parade and you get like five of them, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that was nice. Thank it you. It was. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to us about what's happening right now. I mean, we talked a little bit about your schedule for this coming year, but what's happening with Erica, the original artist in your career for right now and in the, in the future? Um, well, I haven't been doing really much writing lately. I, some people, you know, during COVID, they got really like, oh, I'm just been writing a ton. And for me, it was kind of the opposite. I was just kind of like, just feeling like blah. And I just, there was nothing like, I just didn't have that spark. So I'm hoping to maybe write a couple more songs here now that I'm just feeling better about life. Like everybody is, I think. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to get in and record again. Um, definitely. How the governor goofy said we can take our diapers <laughs> off. Right. Exactly. <laughs> governor um, goofy. I like that I, one. That's the most PC way I could put so. it. I thought that was toned down Lynn. <laughs> I don't do a lot of solo shows, but I do host open mic at Poor Wine Bar and Bistro, and that's where you'll see me do um, some solo stuff before we actually start open mic, which is kind of fun. So and when it's kind of usually? helped me come out of my shell because I'm like I always like performing with people, but then sometimes when it's just me, you know, it, it, it gets a little you know a little more pressure. But um, I've I've come to enjoy it, and um, it's just kind of kind of peaceful, and I don't know. Gratifying, satisfying. Yeah. So with open mic night, is that like, it's not obviously karaoke. It's people bring their own instrument. Yeah. Do they have to call ahead and schedule a slot, or they just show up? Nope, they just show up, and um, it's it's all ages, all abilities, and a lot of times we'll get actual you know actual musicians that come and and play. They just want to try out a couple of new tunes, or they haven't in the beginning. You know, they hadn't a beginning since I should say. When we started doing this again, you know, it was after COVID and nobody had been playing. So they wanted to just kind of get out and play. So um, I had a couple of people sit in and, and that were actual musicians that are now doing gigs. But, um, you need but yeah, to blow the dust off the thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we get all, all levels, all abilities are welcome, you know. But um, And where is open mic? It's the at poor, a poor Wine Bar. Oh, poor Wine Bar. Yeah. And, right. and that's in Atsiko. Okay. Um, do you know where Otsego is, Don? Yep, I do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's just a great um, great restaurant, great family-owned business, I great people. I have a brother-in-law that used to live in Otsego. Okay. And you have done some other stuff there, like with Brandon, right? I thought I remember yeah, the last we you guys do, did. Yeah, we do. Yep, that's – we kind of call that our home base because we, we play there often. Our You're the house band. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was nothing going on in Otsego, and now they've got, what is it, whiskey? Oh. Uh, yeah, so they've got Jack's, Cowboy Jacks. Cowboy yep. Jacks. They've got a Drake O'Neill's, which is own, same owners as Poor Wine Bar. Right. Um, and what then, was the big place? They had a live event in the parking lot for years. Rockwoods, yeah. Rockwood, yep. right. We just played. I told you. Uh, yeah, Brandon and I played there last week, actually. That's a cool place. Yeah. Yep. Good food. Nice venue. Yeah. That, yeah. like, a big outdoor event, that was a pretty big deal. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yep, they're starting up their bonfire Wednesdays, and um, well, I'm playing with the Crown Jewels one of these Wednesdays. I think You're it's in June. You're playing with the Crown Jewels? Well, I'm pl- singing. I would okay. say play. Uh, sing. Well, I knew what you meant. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just wanted to get a rise out of him. <laughs> Did you miss the joke? Yeah, okay, yes. I, playing I with the Crown right. Jewels. Right. Oh, Come on, Erica. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, you're playing. I thought you just sang. Well, you know, playing, singing, yes. Same thing. Um, if I yeah. said performing, Perf- did that age me? <laughs> you can't use the, no. you, you can't say fondling the crown jewels. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's a fun venue too. You got some stuff on Slate with either Brandon or Benjamin? Yeah, you can check out all my stuff on my website, ericahansonmusic.com. I try to keep it updated. Um, I've got pretty much everything that's happening in the next couple of months. Um, yeah, that should be up to date. Um, like tomorrow, we'll be at the Shock People, St. Francis Legion. Um, yeah, that's, I guess I need to get some June dates <laughs> posted on there. <laughs> I was really busy today. I I, I work as a um, I work for Renters Warehouse too. I'm a realtor and leasing agent, so I was just kind of running around today. But my, I was gonna maybe try to 
update that today, but it didn't happen. Um, or you have a full plate. Yeah. Right well, and she's a mom of three <laughs> too. That? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. How old are the are the kids now? You said Julia's ten. So yes, my daughter Julia is ten, and then Charlie's fourteen, and then Sawyer is seventeen. So you must have started when you were like five, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <cow>. you. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah, they grow up fast. <laughs> when we first met, Charlie was like a baby. Yeah. And Julia he was. was like he was a baby. Not. Julia, yeah, it was. So it was a, like two and. Charlie was a baby. Yeah. yeah. Fun. So uh, it's amazing. You know, I don't know if you, our viewers or listeners have been listening, but <laughs> between the three different bands or the duo, the band and the band, she got two duos, and the open her mic, solo act and, and the, the real three estate bands. and the family. I mean, that's a <laughs> lot. Makes me feel really lazy. And she's, <laughs> she's still managed to carve some time out for us. Yeah. Oh, well, heck Yeah. I like to hang out with you guys. It's fun. And it's, gosh, I haven't seen you for so long. It just, it just brings back the good old, um, we did have fun. Breath. We certainly have fun. The nights fun. at the hog's breath. I'm happy to have been a part of something that was so fun for so many people for so long. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> a lot of memories made, that's for sure. A lot of babies made. <laughs> so where was this shot taken? Woo! <laughs> All right. Um, so that was. She's got your her bling up in front <laughs> and present. <laughs> that was at Route Forty Seven. Adam Grimm took that, and bless him, he came out and just wanted to photograph our band. He photographs like national events, and he came out and just photographed our band for free. I'm like, what can I give you? And he's like, don't worry about it. I just wanted to get out and shoot some pictures, and that's that's kind of when things were kind of starting again. And so I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So Which group was this? This was with Girls Night Out. Okay. Tribute to the Superstar Women of Country. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, yeah, kind of a fun shot there. <laughs> um, that's definitely a superstar shot. <laughs> that's my that's favorite. That's what we're talking but he about. Has You're quite being the very eye. modest. He has a great eye. I mean, he, yeah. Got to give it to the photographers out there and. Glad they're starting to get some more work now. So, <laughs> so do you think you'll work your way now that you got four singles to an LP at some point? Um, I've been thinking about it, but I don't know. I mean, like people, CDs aren't really that popular anymore, and it's like, well, should I make a CD? And I'm like, well, I don't know. People don't make an LP, or should do you just want to stream it on Spotify? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking to get rich or anything or make any, not that you can, but <laughs> make any money off of it. It's just, it's, it's the pure enjoyment of, of creating a song and um, kind of just putting it out there and, you know, hearing people say that they enjoy it is that's the whole, you know, gift to me. So. Do you <laughs> like one versus the other, the original versus the cover stuff? Cause it's so very different. Is yeah, it one you like I, better? It is very different. I I enjoy um, kind of sometimes putting a spin on cover songs with our duos, you know, um, and just kind of picking kind of what moves me or what has inspired me. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's both. Both is, is awesome to me. So <laughs> Right. Totally agreed. Oh. It's like satisfying in a, in a its own way, right? Yeah, yeah. Scratch the itch of being an original artist and getting that response from the crowd, appreciating that experience that you poured onto paper, right? Versus where you're just throwing a party, right? Right. Like you just want them to have some drinks and dance and right get crazy. Yep. Let their hair down. Yep. Time you ever let your hair down anymore? <laughs> yes, that's important. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Boy. Not like I used to, but uh, yeah, my wife and I kick it up once in a while. Get on the dance floor and twirl it around a little bit. Nice. You got it. Nice. Yeah, you got to do that. Yep, and I'd like to do some of that this summer, going to see Erica perform. Please do, in one of the yes. Venues. Please come out. Seeing some of the other guests perform. And Erica, you evidently know our old friend Heidi Owens. She was on our second podcast. Yes, yes. She's a we're, hoot. We're Facebook friends. I we're not, I don't know her super well personally, uh -huh. um, but 
we're Facebook friends and we're kind of, you know, in the same circles. Well, knowing both musically. of you, I can see you two really hitting it off. You both have wonderful personalities. Thank you. You're Spit a little fire. more humble than Yeah, me. she's she's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, if you heard that, deal with it. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I used to watch her in Boogie Wonderland. Yeah. Like, I was like, just imagine. And that was back when I was had no clue that I'd ever be performing on stage. I'm like, wouldn't that be amazing? And she was, I always thought she was amazing and oh. had a lot of respect for her. So, yeah, she's... She's a great gal. Yep. Great vocalist. She is. Well, Erica, we're going to um, start bringing this plane in for a landing. So we're going to tell people to put their trays in the upright position and put their <laughs> seatbelts on and all Finish that stuff. Finish their peanuts. Finish their peanuts, yep. Um, so before we let you get out of here, tell people where they can find you. I know you mentioned Spotify. Yeah, I've got my originals on Spotify, Erica Hansen. Um, obviously, there's nothing just just me <laughs> um and then yeah you can find my website ericahansonmusic.com and you can find my updated shows which i promise i'm going to get the july show, june and july shows on there um very quickly you can find the projects that i'm it's involved like a million in of them. <laughs> yeah so it's it's just it's exciting that you know music is happening again and I mean, not only for us artists, but for people who enjoy going to see live music, like myself. <laughs> so, and yeah, it's just, I'm just happy that things are moving along again. <laughs> totally agreed. All right. Well, that's, uh, I think, going to wrap it up for us today, Tom. So, folks, don't forget to send us emails to Boots and Backstraps Podcast at gmail.com with any questions for us or our guests, mm -hmm. and we can get answers for you that way. But, Make sure that you check us out on all those same platforms, your Facebook and um, all the audio platforms, YouTube, um, Spotify, Google Play, like all those kinds of places you'll see both audio and video versions of our podcast. And uh, give us a like and a thumbs up and comment. We always like to read comments on those things too, so do that. TK. Erica, it was so nice having you here. <clears throat> You're so you. engaging and what a wonderful voice and what a wonderful talent. I look forward this summer to coming and seeing you perform. Thank you. I hope you do. Oh, we I'll will. give you a shout out. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, boy. Absolutely. <laughs> the shoe will be on the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and folks, remember, whether you're belting out your favorite country song or out pursuing your favorite game animal, I encourage you to use that same passion to pursue the Lord. He will teach you to shoot straight. Thanks for viewing us today, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Come on now. Honey's on looking for back straps way deep in the woods. Tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon. When the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots. Some backstreet.